Let's start with some politics now. The dust is yet to settle on the fallout of the governing New Patriotic Party's National Delegate Conference, which elected executive to steer the affairs of the party for the next four years. Now, while the election may be over, what still lingers are questions over the 275 buses promised by newly elected Chairman Freddie Blay. The National House of Chiefs has waded into the controversy. Now, the purchase of the buses described as vote buying, which is against the law, has been condemned by many. And it appears there are some contradictions in what Mr. Blaze aides and the party leadership is saying about this project. There is more in this news desk report. The former Lembele MP has been criticized by both his opponents and some of his party members on his decision to obtain $11.5 million to procure 275 buses for the MPP's branches in all the constituencies. His spokesperson, Richard Nyama, told Joy News Mr. Blay had deposited $3 million of his own money for the buses, a hundred of which he took delivery of last week. He explained the party was informed of this project. These buses were bought uh, with the bank facility in excess of 11 million US dollars, and the loan will be paid back. And in actual fact, the banks will make a, a profit on this. But the constituencies at the end of each month would also have some money, uh, at least half of the, 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 the earnings go into their accounts to run the constituency uh, 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 business. And so uh, we are not taking the risk of giving the buses to each and every constituency to go keep them. If you go to my constituency, for instance, Kandai, this bus will not last a week because of the terrible roads. Secondly, they may not get enough business to make it profitable. And so uh, Mr. Freddie Blay and uh, his associates have gone into an agreement with uh, STC which uh, is a private, uh, is a uh, public company, but has also taken on uh, private uh, buses and vehicles to run for them. And so this is not new. If you have your buses and you want to enter such an agreement with the STC company, you can. And they will run it professionally. We are hoping that in the next two years, we would have paid off the loan to the banks. Uh, the ba uh, buses become permanently that of the constituencies. And we would encourage the constituencies to continue to let STC run those buses. And out of that, in a year, they should be able to buy another new bus. And if it happens, they have two buses in Every six months, they should be able to add another fleet. Editor-in-chief of the new crusading guy, Malik Kubaku, on news for last Saturday, also corroborated Mr. Nyama's claim. The communication mm -hmm. from Freddie Blay and the party, or both, has been problematic in terms of its trajectory. It took some time for exactly what is going on to crystallize. So that's part of the problem they must encounter. But the question is, has there been a violation of any statute or any law as we speak? Has anybody pointed to any of those things? For instance, my brother Jinapo was making a case on the STC thing, but you corrected him mm. because I checked. The STC buses you see out there, about 15-20 percent do not belong to them. My own checks, as at yesterday, show that there is no written agreement, no, agreement. now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. There was an intention expressed to STC that we are expecting these buses to come in, okay. and if they came, we would come to you and structure up an agreement, and then you manage it for us. So as we speak, my own checks, independent checks yesterday, indicated that they have not entered into any formal agreement. But in a clear contradiction to this claim, retained treasurer of the party, Kwabna Abankwa said he was unaware the party had been informed of any such project. The loan for the bus, I have no idea about that. Okay. Because mine, every in politics, everybody has a vision. And I believe it was part of the chairman's vision to arrange some buses for party people and all that. But mine is the three main things I've mentioned. So it was and not a course, party, it was not a party and of uh, course, um, and of course, action. And of course, if the chairman has that vision, we expect that later on it to come to the party for the council and the steering committee to approve and buy into that idea. If the party wants to go into buying buses, we would have to go through a process, steering committee, national council. Mm -hmm. If the chairman says, look, I have some sources 
of revenue, I have some sources of an arrangement I want to do for the party. That is his prerogative. But if he's going to involve the party, because of course we have to pay for, then it has to go through this process. During campaign, everybody makes his promises according to his ability to deliver. And I believe the party chairman made his promise according to his ability to deliver. Anti-graft agency, the Ghana Integrity Initiative, has already condemned the procurement as morally wrong and must be investigated. Well, President of the House of Chiefs, uh, Toby Afede, uh, has questioned the source of funding and motive for the gesture and suggested that the Office of the Special Prosecutor takes interest in the matter. He was addressing members of the House at their third general meeting in Kumasi. So Africa loses 1.8 billion a year. Ghana's share of that is about $3 billion a year. Several times the amount of aid we receive every year, which means that if we can kill this cancer, we will not meet the aid that we receive every year, which means that the best way of achieving the president's vision of Ghana beyond aid is to kill corruption. Again, which means that we can do more of our roads, drain our gutters, and minimize the harmful effect of flooding when the heavy rains come, and therefore minimize the loss of life. It means that we all again have to support the fight against uh, corruption. Let me say that the frequency of cor corruption allegations is worrying because that frequency itself suggests lack of trust and lack of transparency. Some time ago, it was one party building a multi-million dollar headquarters. We all sat down and did not complain. And more recently, it's some aspiring chairman of the party buying several, several 225 vehicles. These are matters that should attract an unknown's uh, attention. And I'm very happy that at least the later one has attracted the attention of the special uh, prosecutor. Too many times we hear wranglings between government and various anti-corruption agencies. That is not good for our country. All of that wrangling again suggests lack of uh, transparency, and we have to work very hard in a non-partisan fashion to reduce those perceptions. So we have a, a, a task on our hands, and I know we have to pass on this fight to eliminate this problem from our midst. Political science lecturer Professor Ransford Jampo has also been speaking on this matter. He spoke earlier with my colleague uh, Kojo Yangtze. The conference went on amidst allegations of treating. When we talk about treating, we're talking about vote buying or what people refer to as monocracy. When you talk about treating, essentially we're talking about inducing somebody with either cash or something in kind to get his vote. And um, we were told about the vehicles that were procured and, and all that. See, in my candid view, if somebody has the resources and wants to help his party, it's fine, so be it. Generally, my research showed that political party support, supporters' contribution to party functioning is just about 2%. The rest, they thrive on other people outside the parties and all that. And so if somebody has the resources and somebody has what it takes to raise resources to help the party, I have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. But the timing is what determines whether the initiative is aimed at vote buying or not. And so I'm saying that if um, the... Mr. Fred Blee um, wanted to help the party. He could have helped, you know, way before um, the election, so that people would say that, yes, I mean, he meant well and he wanted to help the party and all that. But the timing, this was done just in the lead up to the election. And you cannot tell me that it wasn't vote buying. And yet the party itself failed to say anything against it. And so the silence of the party, the near silence of the party, in my view, amounts to a conferment of legitimacy on vote buying. And we must always be worried about the implications of vote buying on the expression of the sovereign will and choice of the ordinary people. You see, democracy 
used to be direct in its classical form. Now we have what we call representative democracy. And so you want people to choose mm. those who think have what it takes to represent their interests. You want ordinary people to choose them into power. In doing so, they are required to do so with their own wisdom and with their own conscience. Professor Jampo speaking to Kojo Yangsin there. Now, the minority in parliament is also demanding the removal of Freddie Blay as board chairman of the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation. The minority in the news in a statement want an immediate forensic audit as well into the finances of the GNPC. The probe, they say, is to establish whether or not the GNPC board chair Freddie Blay used GNPC funds to finance the purchase of the 275 buses for the NPP. Adam Mutuakilo is the spokesperson for the Minority on Mines and Energy Committee in Parliament. He deserves the right to use when it is a sitting. And that is why we are saying that we believe that the forensic audit will reveal the truth of where the three million dollars is coming from. Once he has not been able and the president hasn't set up any forensic audit to prove it, we will line it to any other activities that is uh, hampering the development of the nation. You made mention... And even if, assuming, he uses his own money at that extent, it destroyed the fabric of the society, pointing to the figure that it's money, that is everything. And when a society thinks that it's only money, they will use all means to acquire money. And it also sends a signal to government appointees, especially when it is embraced by the president in this occasion, that, okay, let me acquire more wealth, the president will like me more. And that leads to corruption. So it becomes an opening, small, but it can expand to government appointees. Once the president had embraced it, the president should have, should have to some extent, warned him that the level of expenditure, we are worried, you are sending a wrong signal to the whole world and the nation in respect to politics. But the president embraced it and praised him and supported him. It leads to all kind of impression in the minds of Ghanaians, and especially to her, his appointees. Assuming it was even coming from his private resources. Adam Mutuakilu speaks for the Minority on Energy and Mines uh, Committee in Parliament. Now, the latest to join in this conversation is founder of All People's Party, Hassan Ayerga. He also wants the special prosecutor to take keen interest in this matter and perhaps investigate. I want him to be investigated. Mm. I want him to be immediately called to come and tell and to come and give records of how he got the money because he's a public worker. Mm. We will not allow people to take our money and our resources for granted. Mm. And the special prosecutor should begin to start investigating immediately. Mm. And this investigation, we want it to be live. OK, so you are calling for a live uh, telecast of Freddie Blay, so that Martin Hamidou will be seen working mm. and doing the right thing. Because not even in the US, if you do this, you'll be arrested. Mm. You'll be arrested immediately. Public worker, mm. you deposit $3 million. How much is your salary? The salary of Freddie Blay, from the day he was born, and started working till date, cannot give him $3 million as a public worker. He can't make $3 million. Mm. Right. I know Freddie Blay very well. Mm. And that the daily guide he runs cannot make a million dollars. But the, Mr. Freddie Blay was able to pay $3 million as deposit to buy $11 million worth of buses to distribute to the constituencies to vote him. Mm. Is it not vote buying? Mm. Is it not a level of corruption? And I need Martin Hamidou to come and explain to us okay. whether he is working we'll or, he, yes, or he just wants to see those who have employed him yeah. to do the unnecessary while he keeps quiet. We'll come to Martin Hamidou. So $11 million. Mm -hmm. The whole of Daily Guide is not worth $500,000, not to talk of $11 million. Really? And if, yes, that is his, 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 his work, that's his mm. job. Beside that, he's a public worker. He's a board member of one of the, is it GMPs or one of yes. it? Yes. 
So where did he get $3 million to deposit? And I'm told he said that Merchant Bank gave him the loan. Yeah, he borrowed. He said he, he borrowed went, it. Uh, yeah, what he went for collateral loan. did he use to get the $11 million to be borrowed? And how did he borrow it? Because as I'm, as, so far as I am aware, he doesn't have dealings with Merchant Bank because he said it's from President, former President Muhammad's brother, Ibrahim Mahama. Mm. So how did he acquire the loan? And the worst of it is that when these buses came, I was shocked. I am a businessman, mm. and I know what it means to put a car in a container. We don't put buses in containers. Mm. You put cars like Rolls Royce, cars like Lamborghini, mm. cars like Bentley. These are the kind of cars we ship in containers, mm. not a, 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 so Toyota Hayes or whatever yeah. they call it. So the cost of the container alone, bringing two buses in, mm. is more than $8,000 mm. just to ship these containers. Wow, what a rich man. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So, so it means you're doubting uh, his assertion that he borrowed money to take care of all these things. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Because right now, they are saying investors helped them. Mm. Investors did this. So we now know that the MPP has borrowed more money in one and a half year than the rest of government put together for 67 years. Yeah. Because if, if, if Mr. Blay, within one year, six months, is able to borrow $11 million alone, he alone can borrow $11 million to buy buses to entice the voters, mm. then I don't know how much Mr. Baumia or Dr. Baumia and Kent Foriat has borrowed to run Ghana. Wow. Then we are finished. Well, uh, you were talking, you were raising issues with uh, the special prosecutor. Uh, you think uh, he's not done enough uh, with these things happening, uh, especially minorities also calling for a probe into um, the finances of the GMPC because they think the board chair, who is uh, Freddie Blay, who uh, has bought these uh, minibuses for his, uh, their constituencies or all the constituencies, uh, they are also raising issues just like you are. Um, do you think uh, the special prosecutor, Martin Amidou, uh, has not done enough or is too quiet? I think he's playing to their gallery. How, how, how do because, you? Because um, it's almost five months since my uncle Martin Amidou has been made special prosecutor. Mm. And I think that even though I'm told it's a slow process, but invitations are not slow process. Mm. To see wrongdoing is not a slow process. Because Mr. Blay, by now, should have been invited by the uh, special prosecutor office. As a public servant, he is a public servant. How did he come by $11 million? And why is he using that to entice voters because it's against our law. Mm -hmm. You're bribing by corruption. Leader of the All People's Congress, APC, Hassan Ayerga, they're speaking to my colleague, Emmanuel Ante. 